MMA journalists and fighters have a strange symbiotic relationship. They're like Venom and Eddie Brock. They are contentious, but can benefit from each other. Today, we're not looking at the bright side of this coexistence, though. No, this list is all about those times that fighters simply have had enough with the reporter's questions and in turn responded with vitriol, whether actually warranted or not. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are 10 times reporters got under a fighter's skin. Number 10. Hector Lombard gets the last word. Sometimes reporters and fighters just get off on the wrong foot, and often it's because the question is worded in such a way that it rubs the athlete the wrong way. Hector Lombard had just defeated Falonico Vitali in a non-title bout via third-round KO at Bellator 44, and the fight wasn't exactly anything to write home about, which prompted this reporter to inquire about why, which led to this exchange. If you're feeling to fight in the second round, people always talk. If you're feeling the third round, you gotta talk. It's kinda like, dude, you know, whatever. My favorite part about this clip is the fact that everyone then claps for Hector as if he had just given some kind of rousing speech about stopping terrorism. It's amazing. But the beef doesn't end there. Later in the presser, as this same reporter asks Alexander Slominko, who also fought on the card about a rematch with Lombard, the Cuban fighter again showed his disdain. Now, at this point, the man is just tempting fate. Nobody wants any part of an angry Hector Lombard, but that should have been it. However, at the end of the press conference, Hector requested a microphone just so he could get one last little piece of his mind in there to this reporter. I was sick, so you know, right? I was really sick. Do not ask Hector Lombard's opponents about getting rematches with Hector Lombard while he is sitting in the same room. Number 9. Michael Bisping shuts down Karen Bryant. If there's one thing that Michael Bisping can do, it's fight. If there's a second thing, it's absolutely verbally destroy people. It sounds like I the know worst that I'm gonna knock book you've ever read. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the Count is well known for his quick wit and shutting people down. It just wasn't expected at a post-fight show on FS1 when he was working as an analyst to co-host Karen Bryant, no less. The team was discussing the main event finish of UFC Glasgow, in which Gunnar Nelson was KO'd by Santiago Ponzinibbio. Bisping argued that because of Nelson's karate stance, his chin was in the air, which caused his problems, and he should have tucked it. Bryant's argument was that that was his style, and many fighters have effectively used it. Here's what then happened. It's not open for debate. Uh -oh. Ask any striking it Coach, Karen, you're very good at reading the teleprompter. We are the fighters, okay? The chin has to be tucked. The exchange was the talk of the Twitter world that night, and although later in the broadcast the two joked about it, people believed there was real tension there. However, if you listen to both of their accounts after the fact, it doesn't appear that way. Karen on her podcast pointed out that they'd been there for 12 plus hours and everyone was a bit loopy, which led to the exchange. Michael on his own podcast praised Bryant, and while he stuck to his point, he said there was no ill will and that it was good TV. Indeed it was. Number 8. Conor McGregor sells some proper 12. The entire lead up to UFC 229 was pure madness, let's be honest here. So there's a good chance among the arrests, the insane New York presser, ma, 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 shut your mouth, mate, and the rest of the shenanigans that led to even more shenanigans post fight, you might have missed this gym. When an Israeli reporter decided to ask Connor at the Fight Week press conference if his brand new Proper 12 whiskey is any good because he's been hearing reviews that weren't too positive. A bold move considering Connor's ability on the microphone, and well, as you're about to see, this poor guy never had a chance. Here's how Connor cut the question off before it could even be finished. Ask my it's bollocks, terrible, and Ask my bollocks is usually a sign that the question is not welcome, which makes the second part of this hilarious exchange all the more baffling when Connor goes into full salesman mode and the reporter misunderstands what's going on. It is the tastiest Irish whiskey there is on the planet. I fucking love it. And I don't give a bollocks what anyone says. I'm not even trying to sell it. Just have a sip of it. Just take a right. ball with you and I enjoy will. yourself. Now, not you, the smell of you. Get keep him out here. Oh my God, that was brutal. To have a packed arena of people eating out of Connor's hands and then to get that verbal beat down, that one had to sting. Number seven, Tito Ortiz has no comment for Ariel. The irony of this clip is simply chef's kiss. So we're at the UFC 140 pre-fight press conference, Tito Ortiz is fighting Lil Nog on the card, and intrepid reporter Ariel Hawani is on the scene to ask a question about how Ortiz has recently changed his persona from the bad boy we once knew to a kinder, gentler Huntington Beach resident. Let's see what the new, more positive Ortiz has to say in response to that. I don't like you, so I'm not gonna answer your question. 
Positivity! Ariel, in his classic tension-breaking style, then says this to Dana, and it's just great. Should I ask a follow-up, or would that be inappropriate <laughs> at this point? I don't like you either, so I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's I'm a kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> He's not kidding. Dana then forced Tito to answer the question, and his answer is not important or interesting, but what is interesting is the story behind this. So Ortiz fought Ryan Bader at UFC 132, and Helwani asked him before that fight what he thought Bader's weakness was, and he told him takedowns. So Ariel being Ariel, he then asked Ryan what he thought about Tito saying that his wrestling was a weakness, and that's where things went wrong. Ortiz apparently felt like Helwani was instigating, which is a common complaint from fighters, although he was just saying what you said. And so, in a later account from Ariel, backstage post-victory, Tito ran up to him yelling in his face, saying he would never talk to him again. The two have been on and off cordial since then, but mostly off. Number 6. Mike Perry, Mike Perry's Mike Perry is most certainly known to be a bit animated when it comes to his interactions with the media and, well, just about 95% of the time in general. But a surprisingly subdued Platinum was taking questions prior to his fight with Donald Cerrone at the UFC's 25th anniversary show. Now, if you recall, this was the Jackson Winklejohn fallout fight where Cerrone would ultimately leave the gym and Perry was now representing it. Things start off normal enough when Perry very calmly replies to a question about his friendship with Cowboy. There's no handshakes till Sunday morning. Pretty chill there, Mike. Maybe he's turning a new leaf. Let's see how he reacts to a follow-up question, asking if Luis Pena is his best friend. He's here for the fight. He's a good guy. Why you gotta be gay with it? This year, we best friends. <laughs> All right, now we're getting the platinum experience here. I guess this reporter was from the Friendship Network since he keeps asking about these things, but then Perry goes full Perry. Are these people your best friends? You're standing pretty close to them. Sure. Your hair's pretty fucking friendly. Motherfucker. Classic comeback. Definitely totally made sense. And with that, Mike calls it a day. Any other fucking questions? I think what we learned here is that Fight Week is not the time to be asking fighters about their friendships. Number five. Ronda Rousey goes off on conference call. Let's go back to UFC 184. It's 2015. Ronda Rousey is 11-0 and taking the MMA world by storm. She's headlining the card against Kat Zingano, and on the media conference call before the event, some shit went down. So there's this reporter from Breibart named Daniel Flynn, and he asks this really long-winded and convoluted question that I'll spare you here, but the gist of it was, will Ronda's outside interests, like acting and modeling, affect her fighting career? Keep in mind, this question took a hot minute to be asked, and then immediately Kat Zingano requested that he repeat it because she didn't understand it because it was so long-winded. So finally, when Ronda had the chance to respond, this is what she had to say. And the reason why you doubt the ability that it could ever be done is the reason why you will never do anything that great. Sick burn. But things weren't done yet. Flynn's next question was about concerns he saw over women headlining UFC cards and viewers being turned away by this. And again, Ronda just wasn't having it. You are what we need to change about this culture. Things were certainly contentious right from the start in this one, as both of his questions were long-winded and pretty combative, so I gotta say, while she does often receive criticism, I definitely see where Ronda was coming from in this one. Number four, Conor McGregor's done with a TMZ reporter. It takes a special kind of person to be able to do the type of questioning one sees on TMZ. These are not interviews, these are not press conferences, they're exchanges in transition. People aren't there to talk. And one method these journalists use is asking ridiculous things to invoke a response. Have you found Chloe's uh, 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 assets yet? <laughs> that, was, that was a compliment that was meant as, yeah. It's December 2015, and Conor gives one of these guys an interview. This is where we have the famous Jesus fight response. There's not a man alive that can be me. <laughs> but Jesus ain't alive, is he? So I don't f***ing know, maybe. Now, that exchange got Connor into all kinds of hot water, and it was a silly question. Plus, McGregor was trying to be the entertainer that he is, but because there was so much made of it, he remembered this TMZ reporter, and when he was met with him after his press conference prior to UFC 196, he was not having any of it from the start. Hey, so you think your opponents are running scared? This is the second time in a row now this has happened. What do you think? I think so. Yeah, well, there you go. Obviously, the notorious one's not the biggest fan. So then the reporter asks Connor about calling Nate Diaz a cholo. He's like a little cholo gangster from the hood. And whether it was racially motivated, this man has no fear. Mate, shut the f up and get away from me. You're it. Remember that Jesus shit you brought up? Yeah. It's such a stupid question. You really gotta have some thick skin if you're gonna be in the walk up interview business. Number three John Jones wants better journalism. 
John Jones has had a bit of a history of not being a fan of reporters. Here he is handling a question from Luke Thomas before UFC 214. I don't really like you, Luke, so I'm not gonna answer your question. <laughs> and while that's probably the most famous incident, there's certainly one that rivals it in terms of pure ridiculousness, and that is, of course, from the UFC 232 press conference. Now, if you recall, that's the show that moved to California from Nevada so John could fight with his pulsing picograms of Terrinabal. His initial dismissal was fairly tame. Why have you tested now? Positive. Uh, next question, please. Thank you. But then when Swedish reporter Isabel Kostik essentially threw the question to Dana, things just got silly. Tell me, why are we still having this guy here instead of seeing a two-year suspension like Frank why, Mir? Why, why, uh, why are we still, why are we, why are we still, what? What's the question? I think my favorite part is John telling her to sit down when she was in fact already sitting down, which she pointed out. <laughs> Sit down. I'm sitting down. Look, I want to take you. the mic from her. Better questions. Jones did, however, appreciate her follow-up question to opponent Alexander Gustafsson. The focus is on this instead of the big fight coming up. It's finally a good question. Finally a good question. I gotta be honest, I don't think he should have been that big a fan of that question. The entire bizarre exchange was the talk of the MMA town for the day, but all is well that ends well as John would apologize to her at the post-fight press conference. Sister here uh, with the camera, I was extremely disrespectful to you and I'm sincerely sorry. Number two, Tony Ferguson loves baseball. You could honestly fill this entire list with exchanges Tony Ferguson has had with the media. He's simply hot and cold on them, but mostly cold. Let us not forget the magnum opus that was his 20 plus minute free flow of thoughts, Fight Week UFC 229. What's up fuckers, you miss me? <laughs> Why is Michelangelo your favorite ninja tussle? <laughs> Fucking nunchucks, man. Nunchucks and pizza, and this is a goofball. But a most recent exchange was a bit more baffling than Ninja Turtles. It's the UFC 249 press conference, and things started off normal enough, well, for a Tony Ferguson press conference, when a reporter asked him if the fight with Habib was personal. He owes me money. He heard on a high schooler, even when he was warm with Daniel Cormier not to lock his hands. And he did the homeless thing. That's three strikes. You're fucking out. Baseball metaphor, and he brought a baseball with him. That's totally fine. The next question from this same reporter was about how long Tony intended to fight. Family, friends, whatever, can always gonna have their opinions, but it doesn't matter. Depends on how your how much your mental toughness is out there competing, and then what you're gonna do with it. All right, doing well. But as the baseball analogy went, three strikes and you're out. You know, mental health issues and working through that. It takes a lot of courage as a professional athlete, especially a lot of people look up to you. Fuck you. I was, I was giving you props. I was, I was just wondering. Fuck the advice. Next question. Alrighty then. It's definitely understandable that Ferguson might not have been willing to discuss something so personal in that moment, and his issues in 2019 were well documented. To be fair to him as well, leading up to his fight with Cerrone, he told MMA Junkie in regards to questions about his mental health. Quit asking me fucking dumbass questions. You want to keep asking those questions? I'm going to say fuck you. Straight up. Number one, Vitor Belfort wants to fight. John Morgan from MMA Junkie is a staple of post-fight press conferences and is generally considered one of the best in the business. If you've seen a UFC presser, chances are you've heard the man's voice. Dana, uh, uh, it ended up being a fantastic event, but of course, However, Vitor Belfort was under some pretty heavy scrutiny in 2013 because this was the height of the TRT controversy, and well, just look at him. When Morgan began to ask his question at the UFC on FX post-fight presser, in which Vitor had just KO'd Luke Rockhold in the first round, Belfort immediately knew what was coming. After Morgan asks him if he was frustrated that TRT is always brought up now after anything he does, Vitor replied how you might expect someone with high testosterone levels. Can somebody beat him up for me, please? Can somebody beat him up? Next, Vitor would say in Portuguese, you're boring and get out of here, but John didn't flinch, of course, because he's a pro. He then asked a follow-up to Rockhold about whether TRT affected the outcome. TRT had nothing to do with that kid. Yeah, Michael Bisping may not feel the same way about that one. Vito, don't get me started. You know, we've all got places to go today, I'm sure. Huge shout out to the pride of the West Midlands, Tom Moore, for putting his editing sorcery to work on this video. Follow him on Twitter at TomMJMoore. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. We've got three new videos or more for you every single week. Let us know what you thought of the video in the comments below, follow On Point MMA on Twitter, and have yourself a wonderful day.